And hello, everybody, and happy 4th of July. If you live in the U.S., that is. Uh, if you don't live in the U.S., well, I guess it's still happy 4th of July. It's just not anything, you know, incredibly special. It's just the 4th of July, and, well, it's Saturday. Yeah, uh, I do apologize for holding the stream on Saturday instead of Friday uh, this week, but I was rather busy, um... I've, uh, I'm, I'm over uh, someplace other than where I'm normally living uh, these days, so that's that's what I was doing last evening. Anyway, um, so let's, uh, so yeah, Quaternion, guys, um, that music you heard, if you are clueless, uh, you know, regarding American culture, that is not going to be in Quaternion. That's a famous march by John Philip Sousa. And uh, let's boot up Quaternion. So, uh, the first thing you're going to notice is this text here. Reshade, yes, and Master Effect Reborn. Uh, I'll get to what that means in a while. But... For now, let's jump straight into uh, let's jump straight into gameplay stuff. You'll notice that the font is different. Um, again, that's something I'll mention later. So, this is the game. Uh, the physics have been changed from the last time you saw them. Uh, not, I mean, it's still bullet and all, but uh, but but the the fix for the glitch. Well, that's still a glitch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so the glitch that I mentioned last time about uh, falling, uh, or about uh, hitting bumps on the floor, uh, so the fix that I had in mind back then didn't quite work as well as I had planned. So I implemented a more comprehensive fix. Um, if you remember, the previ previous fix was one line of code, and this fix is, uh, if I can find it, this fix is... no... here we go. This is the fix now. It's rather lengthy. Um, it's still not perfect, as you can see. Uh, now, sometimes, I'm overcorrecting, so instead of uh, bumping on surfaces when you shouldn't, you go through them. So, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, <clears throat> Set. Go. But that can possibly be fixed, in, at least in most cases. I'll definitely later on want to perhaps do a bit more research, look into that, see, okay, what exactly is going on here? How can I uh, get rid of it? Um, if I hit the wall in the right place, I should be able to go through it again, I think. Um, <clears throat> why does it seem like this wall is a lot more solid from the... Oh, there we go. There we go. So, yeah. Still a bit glitchy, but no worries. I can, again, I, I'll look into that, see if there's some way I can get around that. Um, but, yeah, uh, the main thing I was working on this week, if you remember, is um, moving platforms and having them actually use paths. So, uh, let's take a look here. And do uh, two and my path. It's a bit laggier than usual due to the fact that I'm streaming, but as you can see, this platform is moving and rotating according to a predetermined path. Yeah, wow, I'm actually bouncing a lot on that. Um, you'll have to trust me that it is smoother when I'm not streaming. It's just that you know, because of the lag, it's a bit weird like that. So, yeah. Um, so, it, the way this is done is using kinematic uh, movements, or, you know, you could call them movement controllers, I suppose. Uh, the way this works is there are currently three types. I'll possibly slash probably add more in the future. Uh, the first is linear. So if I do BT create linear movement, and let's put that on body um, five, 
and that takes no arguments. And then when I do that, this just allows me to set velocity. So I can set, say, the velocity of body 5 to be 0, 0, 1, and there we go. I've now manually set the velocity. Uh, you can't normally do that anymore. If you try, it will just display an error message saying, hey, um, you don't have a movement set, so you can't set velocity. Um, the second type is what's called a parent movement. <clears throat> so I'm going to create a parent movement on six, on body six, and parent it to body five. And what this will mean is that however body 5 moves, body 6 moves the same way. So you see now, now this part of the platform is also moving up. You can see that, that that platform is still the way it was. But now these two platforms are moving up because this one I've set the velocity on. And then this one is parented such that it follows the velocity of the other one. Oh, I don't think you've actually seen these different platforms yet. You, you guys have just seen the one platform. So yeah, um, there are multiple platforms in this test level at the moment. Um, this one is learning to roll, of course. This one was provided by Matt P. And this one over here is uh, also provided through Matt P. Uh, I believe it's from uh, one of the test levels that they were working on for uh, for some version of MBU, but obviously converted to have MBG textures. The reason why this one looks so dark, uh, that's a known glitch with Blender's DTS exporter. However, I was too lazy to fix it. So you've got this. <laughs> so yeah, so, uh, and the third type of course is path movement. And what that does is it essentially uses a path, just like old moving platforms. So here I've got this path. Oh, yeah, that's a glitch that I still have to get around to fixing at some point. You can actually move the marble by, uh, you know, while, while you have the camera open by using the keyboard. But so, so here we have this path and we have four markers. We have this one, this one, this one, and that one. And note that they're all rotated slightly differently around the z-axis in multiples of 90 degrees. Um, this is to demonstrate that if you rotate these, yes, it actually does affect the rotation. Smoothing type is similar to before. There's a linear, there's accelerate. Uh, spline doesn't quite work properly just yet. It's some glitch with the math. I'll worry about that when I actually care about spline, which... Currently, I don't that much because it's not used quite as often. But if I need it, I'll fix it. So yeah, the, the reason why I have this platform in here, by the way, was to test um, was to test how well the uh, don't bounce everywhere when you're rolling glitch, you know, how well the fix for that works um, on very curvy platforms. And as you can see, it's about how you'd expect. So that's good. The bad news is the whole fall through the floor thing, which um, will fall through the floor or through the wall, or often it happens at the corner between the floor and the wall. Like right here, you can reproduce it fairly easily if I can get the jump right. But, but again, these are glitches that can be fixed. I'm fairly certain. I'm not sure exactly what causes them, which, if you ask me, is a good thing because it means that I know that it. I don't necessarily know that it's some inherent issue in the physics that I won't be able to fix. <laughs> Go. So yeah, so moving platforms are working for the most part. I didn't really get to the secondary goal that much. Uh, like you still, uh, there, there are still issues where. Um, Yes, I'm doing a feature Friday on Saturday. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, as I mentioned earlier, I was occupied yesterday. But yes, um, uh, there there are still a few glitches. But like, um, it, it, you still can't just drop the marble at the camera or anything like that. Um, that is still to be done, and I think part of that will actually involve fixing this glitch as well. 
Where did it go? But yeah, once that's all, uh, once that's all fixed, um, Ready. once that's all fixed, the game will be running a lot better. So, um, in other news, though, because that's not the only thing I've been up to. Um, <clears throat> so, the fonts are different, you'll notice. Uh, this is a font I found called Exo, which I figure will work pretty well for uh, large amounts of text. Like, um, I don't think that actually uses it, but, you know, um, if I open up the GUI editor and open up, say, the exit game dialog, um, uh, it's an ML, uh, 1471.set text. Hello world. Oh, it has a font specifier. Well, whatever. Um, let's close the game for now. Um, I, I can demonstrate in Word, presumably. Uh, I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't look at that. I don't know what those documents all were even. But yeah. Um, here's XO. <clears throat> it uh, it looks pretty good if you ask me. Um, the other font is actually a font that I was able to design myself called Quaternion. Now. That may look familiar to you. That's basically the Quaternion logo, <clears throat> although it's slightly different. There are a couple of the letters whose shapes I had to change slightly due to limitations of the system I was using to create this font. Uh, it's a free website called Fontstruct. It works really well if you want something that looks all blocky like this, but if you don't, it's not necessarily the best option. Still, it worked for my purposes. So yes, uh, there is now a full font for this, too. It's not just every, you know, it's not like I don't have just the letters in Quaternion. I have all of them, like, uh, uh, oh yeah, capital and lowercase are the same. So I'm planning on using this font, and I, may, I might make a couple alterations to it down the line. But I'm planning on using this for things like uh, level names, although uh, level names won't exactly appear in the same place as they normally do. That is to say, I don't necessarily think I'm going to have a level menu, per se. So yeah. That's Quaternion the font. The other thing that, of course, you noticed is uh, this gray text that says Reshade and, you know, Master Effect. Reshade is an engine that essentially uh, patches your game's uh, OpenGL DLL or DirectX. I think it'll actually work with either, but I currently have it set to use OpenGL. Um, so that uh, you can do post-processing shaders. Um and this works as follows. Uh, basically, you just put a bunch of uh, post-processing shaders in here. Like you can, you can put them in these FX files, or you know, have headers that they include, like in here, etc. Um, I forget whether I had reshade last week, but um, since then I've actually changed my install. Uh, Oh, that's still a slight physics glitch. Um, in the final game, I, uh, you know, I, I originally had it using uh, Framework, which has a lot of really cool shaders and a lot of licensing issues to go with. So 
now I'm using this thing called Master Effect, which I've been given permission to redistribute with whatever modifications I like. And I'm using that uh, right now, actually. Like, right freaking now, it's actually using Master Effect. Um, this may be a bit hard to tell, because I think currently the only shader that's actually active is anti-aliasing. But, like, if I hit the space bar, I can turn the shaders on and off. And if you look really closely, I actually don't know if this goes through it on Twitch at all. But that edge right next to my marble, it looks really jagged until I hit spacebar. And then when I hit spacebar, it looks really smooth. So the anti-aliasing is working pretty freaking well, if you ask me. Um, it's one of those subtle things. Um, it's probably more obvious in the, uh, in the console with anti-aliasing on the somewhat crappy raster font. And it looks even weirder. So, yeah. Um, so, there are a couple of other effects, though. Like, if I open the console and I type in Shader 1. Uh, as you can see, it has no effect because I think I actually disabled the relevant shader. Uh, give me one second. Uh, <laughs> Alright, now I have to find a way to get it to recompile. Um, I found that in practice, one way you can do this is by switching the graphics over to Direct 3D and back. Ready. There we go. go. So, uh, you are not on acid. This is the heat haze shader, which if you ask me looks more like you're underwater or some such. So if, cough, cough, I have levels where you go underwater, I will probably be using the shader in them. Well, when you're underwater, obviously. Not when you're out of the water. Um, and you can turn that on and off with the, uh, with the console command. As you can see, with the console open, the shader is just permanently turned off. That's slightly a glitch, I suppose. Uh, the bigger issue is that I think, if I'm remembering correctly, if you open the yeah, if you open the editor, the effect is permanently on. So obviously, I'll want to fix that. Um, so the way this effect works, uh, it's actually a bit hackish. As far as I can tell, there's no direct way to just like. Uh, communicate with reshade from the game uh, application from the from the uh, host exe. So, if you look really closely in the top left corner of the window, you'll see what looks like a little tiny, tiny black square. If that square is white, the water effect is on. If it's black, it isn't. So that's how it communicates. Again, it's, it's, it's hackish, but it works. There's another effect I want to show you guys, too. I, uh, basically this morning, I was like, hmm, what's a really cool effect that I could have in this? Like, is there some sort of cool effect that I could try to code up? And uh, what I've come up with is this. Um, as you can see, uh, the floor is slightly reflective now. In fact, everything is slightly reflective, and it gets more reflective the closer to parallel to your, uh, direction, uh, that the direction you're looking at is. Uh, you can really see it in here, where you've got these, uh, these walls and the ceiling are all reflecting. Um, now, there are several slight issues with this effect. One is the fact that you get all this weird warping, as you can see here, from the fact that because it's screen space, it can only reflect things that go up to the edge of the screen. Beyond that, it just has, you know, straight lines. Um, 
Another issue is the fact that because the post-processing doesn't really know what's supposed to be a part of the game and what's a part of the GUI, uh, yeah, you get this effect, where the timer is actually getting reflected as well, and the power-up box, and the ready, set, go. Yeah. And in addition, you'll notice this weird sort of distortion where the marble is in the uh, in the dialogue box because it again doesn't realize that that's a separate thing that that's part of the GUI it thinks it's just a part of the level there that particular issue I'm not sure if there's much to be done about but um, but hey for the rest of it, it looks pretty cool I mean look at this here it's like so yeah it's got this like cool glassy effect. I actually really like it. Uh, there's one more issue with it, of course, and that is that the uh, the um, calculations I'm doing aren't actually correct. That is to say, this isn't actually calculating what a screen space reflection would do. It's more of a fake screen space reflection. Um, and this is in part a good thing, because I'm pretty sure a real sp screen space reflection would require uh, post some sort of post-processing ray tracing, which would be very graphically expensive. Um, plus, you know, I, I can't be bothered to implement that at the moment. But but as you can see, it is a little bit in, like not how you'd expect. Like uh, you'd expect the marble's reflection to be a lot wider than just that. Uh, yeah, looking at where the marble is getting reflected is the most obvious way to see. Um, uh, where it says mapping string test guy. Uh, test guy is not high guy. Test guy is actually in the original game code. Uh, that isn't anything I did. So yeah, so if you think this shader looks pretty sweet, um, I might put it in the final game. I'm not sure yet because... Again, it does have several shortcomings for actually, you know, good-looking reflections. But the the fact that it the fact that I was able to accomplish this with like you know maybe thirty minutes or so of messing around in shader code that I barely know how to do, I think is somewhat promising. So those are the main things that I had to show off. Um, Next week, I'll probably focus on making everything just a bit more manageable, like actually having it so that you can drop player at camera and you can move the camera without moving the marble and making sure that opening and saving missions works as intended. I think it should currently, but I don't know. Um, and maybe having a system where you can define moving platforms in the mission file rather than having to make a call in, you know, from the console. <laughs> the console's getting reflected as well, that's pretty funny. Um, so at this point, I will take any questions anybody has. Um, questions regarding Quaternion are encouraged. Uh, other questions may be accepted. <laughs> yeah, that's another issue with these reflections. You can see a slight edge around the marble. That's that's from the fact that I'm doing a discrete derivative of the um, of the Z coordinates. So th where there it goes pretty much vertical or pretty much horizontal rather. Pretty much perpendicular to your vision. You get this weird sort of fringe. <clears throat> you can see it on that uh, edge of that platform there as well. So yeah, any questions? Oh, yeah, don't let me forget, that's another thing I want to work on this week, is um, having some sort of fading system for the audio so that it doesn't cut off abruptly like it currently does when you uh, when you go off of the surface. Why did I call it Quaternion? Um, I thought it sounded cool. It's slightly relevant to the concept of the game in a couple of ways. Number one, 
so so quaternions are used in uh, in you know physics code for rotation, and so it, uh, the, that's where the the connection is rotation because number one, uh, you're moving a marble primarily via rotation, and number two. Oh, sorry, three-folder, I ignored your question because you didn't put a question mark at the end, so I didn't notice it. Uh, number two, um, one of the key features that Quaternion will have that Marble Blast doesn't is rotating platforms. Well, MPU has rotating platforms, and PQ sort of has rotating platforms, but neither one really works like you would want. Uh, how much PQ could a G... PQ, if a Jeef could PQ Jeef. I don't know, because you've told me that a Jeef can PQ Jeef, but not that a Jeef can PQ PQ. So I am honestly not sure. I would need more information. I've been asked that same question like three times by now. Oh, I know the Kelvin and Hobbes you're referring to. Uh, the one where he the one where he says, "How many boards would the Mongols hoard if the Mongol hordes got bored?" Yeah, that's a good one. Any other questions? I think my... I think something is being cooked downstairs. I can smell something. And again, it's July 4th. Things are being cooked everywhere. One of the interesting things about this reflection shader is that if you look closely, you can see where the triangles divide on this. There's actually an earlier uh, sort of study effect I was trying earlier that uh, where you could tell uh, what the poly count of the marble was. Um, yeah. Is it weed? It doesn't smell like weed. It smells like onions. I, I mean, I... Wow, I... I don't know whether I really know what weed smells like. I've smelled things where, based on context, I thought they might be weed, but I theoretically, like, if we're going to be technical, I don't actually know the smell of weed. So, um... So, is it weed? The answer is I'm not sure. Oh, there's one other issue with this reflection shader, by the way, that I didn't mention, and that is that if I exit the level... Yeah, it, it persists on the menu. Ready. For whatever reason, the depth buffer doesn't get cleared. There might be some sort of weird... Um... Ready. Set. Go. Sort of weird uh, thing there. Can you show a bird's eye view of the interior Matt gave you by itself? Oh, <laughs> we activated... Uh, weird water mode. Oh, how does that interplay with the reflection shader? I'm curious. Does it look really messed up and weird? Okay, well, first of all, there's this rectangle getting drawn from my mouse position. Yeah, some weird shader stuff is happening now. <laughs> nope, that's the wrong one. Oh, I can't drag it. Yeah, that's that's the other thing I'm going to have to fix, is uh, you can't actually drag one of these because it's static, so the physics resets it. Uh, but let's see... I create a linear movement on body 
What would that be? Two? Nope, I must have reloaded. It must be six. Uh, have I reloaded the level twice? Is it ten? Yeah, okay. Let me move that out a bit. But yeah, it's that kind of thing that I'm looking to fix this week is, you know, making that a bit more manageable. So, so here's the interior Matt gave me. Yeah, it is pretty nice, isn't it? Let's see if I can make it over. No. Ready, set, go. Shaders off, shaders on. Yeah, you can really see the reflection effect if you toggle shaders on and off. Ready, if you take the tiles go. on the bottom of that interior, uh, on the bottom of this interior, uh, well, no, it's not a square. Uh, it looks like it is, if I can count. Uh, it looks like it's 16 horizontally and 11 the other way. Ready, set, go! That's a glitch. No, 16 by 11. Ready, set, go! Ready, set, go! Fun with physics glitches. Any other questions?
Hmm. Apparently that's perfectly uh, perfectly symmetric there. Did not know that. Yeah, it reflects everything, is what it does. That, uh, the shader. Oh, I'm, I'm so close. I, I don't think it can be done, but it's... It's so fiendishly close, it's like, ugh. Well, that failed. Set. Go. Ready. Set. Go. Ready. And that's happening a lot more than I anticipated, huh? Oh well, good to know, right? Ready, set, go. There, that should be more than possible now. Ready, if I can pull it off. Yay, I did it! To the Um, I don't know the answer to that question, Rousey. But if you have any other questions, I will try to answer them. Otherwise, I think we're about ready to end this. So I'll give you, you know, several seconds to think of questions if you have any others. Well, it's looking like nobody has any other questions. Um, bit of a, uh, bit of a slow day today, I guess, due to, you know, 4th of July and all. So, uh, to everybody who tuned in, thank you for watching the stream. I will try to put it up on YouTube sometime soon. Uh, apart from that, um, yeah. Some really cool things are starting to get put into Quaternion, so get excited for those. And let's hope I can find and fix these physics issues. And have a great day, everybody. And goodbye.